David Ken here with another question bank question in the style of what you find in your Hayes and Harris Math SL textbook, Chapter 9D, and we're looking at applications of the sine and cosine rule. In this question, we're told about a farmer who owns a triangular field with corners A, B, C. One of the sides of the triangle is 104 meters, that'd be this side, A, C. A second side is 65 meters long, and the angle between the two sides is 60 degrees. In this diagram in the middle, it's represented as two 30-degree angles because that's for information given later in the question. What we're going to do first is use the cosine rule to calculate the length of the third side of the field, CB. So, for part A, it said to use the cosine rule, so we'll start with the cosine rule. The cosine rule says that a side squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, take away a correction factor for it not being a right angle triangle, and that'd be two times the product of the two sides times the cosine of the angle between sides A and B, and that would be angle C. In this case, uh, side C, is the, C that is the side that we're trying to find, and the reason that we know that the side that we're trying to find is side C is because it's opposite to the angle between the two sides that we know. So these two sides are A and B, and the angle between them is 60 degrees. So we have our two sides. Uh, one was 104 meters squared, and the other side was 65 meters, and we'll square that. We'll take away 2 times 104 times 65 times the cosine of 60 degrees. Now the cosine of 60 degrees is a major angle that we're responsible for knowing, and the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. However, 104 squared is not something that we would ordinarily have to calculate without the benefit of a calculator. So we'll do the rest with a calculator, and when we plug in, we'll find uh, that the result is 8,281 for c squared, meaning that c would be the square root of that, 91 meters. Whenever you take the square root, you need to remember plus or minus, but since we're talking about lengths, we can throw away the negative result. It's not meaningful to us. That's part A. Part B says that given that the sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, and by the way, that's something that you should just know anyway. That's one of the major angles on the unit circle. They're not required to give you that information, but they did today. And they said that given that the sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, find the area of the field in the form of P root 3, where P is an integer. So they want us to get the area, but they want it in a form other than a pure decimal. Uh, and the reason for that is probably uh, partially uh, to prevent you from using the calculator to solve it 100%. And the other reason is, uh, as we'll find later, that root 3 is going to show up again. But we'll jump to part B. And like the question said, we want to find the area of the whole triangle. Now, in general, the area of a triangle, so we're looking for the total area, And the area of a triangle is 1 half times the product of two sides times the sine of the angle between them. Now, once again, we only know this one angle, this 60 degrees, so the two sides adjacent to it will be 104 and 65. So the total area will be 1 half times 65 times 104 times the sine of the angle between them, and that was 60 degrees. Now, we were told that the sine of 60 degrees was root 3 over 2. So we can make that substitution, and we'll say 1 half times 65 times 104 times root 3 over 2. Now, the question wanted us to answer this without converting root 3 to a decimal. So what we'll do is we'll combine all of these terms together and leave root 3 alone. So this is going to be 65 times 104, then we'll divide that by 2 for the 1 half, and we'll divide it by 2 again for this division by 2. And that'll leave us with root 3 on the end. So we have 65 times 104 times root 3, 65 times 104 times root 3, divided by 2, divided by 2. We'll plug this into our calculator, and what we'll get is 1,690 root 3 for our area. All right, let's move on. 
Now it says, let D be a point on BC, such that the line AD bisects the 60 degree angle. That means that it splits the 60 degree angle into two 30 degree angles. Now the formula will divide the field into two parts, area one and area two, by putting a fence along the line AD. The fence has a length x meters. We'll use this information to show that the area of A1 is 65x over 4. Now with a show that question, we can't use the information that's given to us. We must arrive at the information that's given to us using other information. So we'll try and find the area of triangle A1. So we'll move on to part C, part 1, and we'll find the area of triangle 1. And we'll do so by starting with the general area formula, 1 half AB sine of angle C. We only know one angle in this triangle. It's this 30 degree angle right here. So the two sides will be the sides adjacent to it, 65 meters and x meters, because it's unknown. And we'll say that area 1 is 1 half times 65 times x meters times the sine of 30 degrees. 30 degrees is a known angle on the unit circle. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And so what we get is 65x divided by 1 half divided by, or sorry, divided by 2 divided by 2. That's the same thing as division by 4. So we get 65x over 4 for area 1, and that's what we were asked to find. For part 2, it says find a similar expression for area 2. So it wants us to go through a similar process for area 2. We'll use this other angle 30 degrees, the side x, and this side 104. So we'll say that for part 2, area 2 will be 1 half times 104 times x times the sine of 30 degrees. Just like before, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, and we'll get 104x over 4. 65 doesn't divide by 4, but 104 does. And when you divide 104 by 4, you get 26x. And that would be the area of area 2. Moving on to part 3, it asks us to hence find the value of x in the form of q root 3, where q is an integer. Hence is our hint that it wants us to use the information that we just found in parts 1 and 2 to solve for x. And it wants the solution in the form of q root 3, just like we had the solution before to part b in the form of p root 3. So it wants it as an integer multiplied by root 3 once again. So that root 3 is going to come back to play. So what we need to find the value of x is a relationship between x and things which are known. X is in our two equations for area, which we are meant to use, and our hint was the word hence. So we'll use those two areas because the sum of those two areas ought to equal the area of the whole triangle. So what we can say then is for part three of question C, we'll say that the total area should equal area one plus area two. The total area we already found that was the solution to part B. It was 1690 root 3. Area 1 and area 2 we found in the previous two questions. They were 65x over 4 and 26x. But I'm going to choose to use this expression for area 2 because it more closely matches the expression for area 1 and I'll say 104x over 4. This will help me combine the terms. So I'll add those two fractions by adding their numerators, and I'll get 169x, and the denominator stays the same. That should be equal to 1690 root 3. The next thing I'll do is multiply across by 4, and when I do that, um, I'll get 6760 root 3. is equal to 169x, and then I'll divide everything by 169 to get x is equal to 6760 
over 169 root 3. Performing the division on the calculator, we find that x is equal to 40 root 3 square meters. Next, we'll look at part D. Part D asks us to explain why the sine of angle ADC equals the sine of angle ADB. The difference here is that last letter C and B. So it's asking us why does A, D, C, why is the sine of that the same as the sine of A, D, B? And the answer to that comes from the unit circle. So for part D1, let's sketch a unit circle. Let's call the center D. Let's call one end C. We'll call the other end B. Now we have an angle ADC. In the diagram above, angle ADC was obtuse, and angle ADB was acute. So we'll draw in an obtuse angle, ADC. Now the obtuse angle, ADC, is complementary to the acute angle, ADB. And for that reason, the vertical component of both angles is the same. This vertical component represents the sine of angle A, D, C, and it also represents the sine of angle A, D, B. And so we can say that the sine of angle A, D, C equals the sine of angle A, D, B because angle A, D, C is complementary. to angle A, D, B. And therefore, they share the same vertical component. On the unit circle. Okay, knowing that, we'll try and answer the last part. We'll use the result from part one and the sine rule to show that the ratio of the side BD to the side DC is equal to 5 over 8. So what we want is a relationship between these two sides, and the question gives us a hint and tells us to use the sine rule to find it. So what we'll do is we'll set up some equations for the sine rule for our triangle here. Uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is just copy the diagram down to make it a little bit easier to see. I'll grab that and add it below for part two. So let's do D part two. Question D part two asked us to look at the ratio between B, D, and D, C. Looking at each triangle separately with the sine rule, we're interested in a side and we have the opposite angle. We also have another side, and from part one, we found information about this other angle. So sine rule would make a lot of sense to use with BD and angle A, as well as AB and angle D. So that's how we're going to set it up. We're going to set it up as the side BD over the sine of its opposite angle, 30 degrees, is equal to the side AB, that's 65 meters, divided by the sine of its opposite angle, even though it's unknown, it's angle ADB. At the same time, what we're going to do is we're going to set up another, um, another equation using angle or side DC. 
Psi DC is opposite to angle A, and Psi AC is opposite to that other angle that we were interested in, ADC. So we'll say DC over its opposite angle, 30 degrees, is equal to 104 meters divided by its opposite angle, the angle ADC. Now what we'd, I'd like to do is I'd like to rearrange both of these equations so that I can equate them. There are two things in each of the equations which are equal, the sine of 30 degrees and the sine of ADB and the sine of ADC. I'm going to choose to rearrange them for the sine of ADB and ADC. So this is going to give me the sine of angle ADB is equal to um, So to do that, what I'll do is I'll divide 65 to the other side, and I'll get 1 over the sine of angle ADB is equal to BD over 65 times the sine of 30 degrees. I'll do the same thing down here. I'll divide by 104, and I'll get 1 over the sine of angle ADC is equal to DC over 104 sine of 30 degrees. Now what I can say is that because 1 over the sine of angle ADB should be equal to 1 over the sine of angle ADC, I can make a substitution. And I can substitute 1 and 2 in 4, 3, and 4. So I'll sub 1 for 3, and I'll sub 2 for 4, and I'll get BD over 65 sine of 30 degrees. BD over 65 sine of 30 degrees is equal to DC over 104 sine of 30 degrees. At this point what I can do is I can multiply both sides by the sine of 30 degrees and they'll cancel. This will leave me with BD over 65 is equal to DC over 104. I'll divide DC to the other side and multiply 65 to the other side and I'll get BD over DC is equal to 65 over 104. 65 and 104 can be simplified, and I'll get BD over DC equals 5 over 8, which is what I was asked to solve for.